ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's debate. My name is Sophie Russell and I'm the chairman and Jennifer Lord. And Jennifer is the timekeeper. The adjudicator is Miss Sonia Lowen. The topic of this debate is that the, Ad the Iditarod tra trail sled dog race should be permanently cancelled. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Brighton Secondary School. The negative team seated to my left is from Glenunga International High School. The speaking time for this debate is five minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time. And a double bell will sound at the speaking time. A continuous bell may be rung 30 seconds after the speaking time, in which case the speaker must sit down immediately. Please ensure that your mobile phones and other electronic devices are switched off. I declare this debate open and call upon the first affirmative speaker, Nicholas Burgoff. Dear Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the topic for tonight's debate is that the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race should be permanently cancelled. We, the affirmative team, strongly believe that this statement to be true. We define the topic, the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race, which is the annual race involving Siberian Huskies or Alaskan sled dogs. In its current state, it is run from Anchorage to Nome in Alaska over a distance of approximately 1,850 kilometres. We define permanently cancelled as the event will cease to continue in any form and remain cancelled indefinitely. Today as first speaker, I will be talking to you about the detrimental physical effects, harm and threat of death the dogs face. I will also be speaking of the harsh environmental conditions that the dogs must endure for long periods of time. Our second speaker will speak about how the race is losing support of the community and spenders, as well as how the Iditarod contributes and funds the wider sledding dog industry, which is renowned for its cruelty. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team case. Firstly, the Iditarod has a devastating effect on a dog's health and physical state. The gruelling and punishing length of the race, a ridiculous 1,100 miles through treacherous conditions, can leave dogs with significant injury and lifelong negative health effects. The Iditarod has killed more than 150 dogs since it began in 1973. Five died in 2017 alone. According to the Sled Dog Action Coalition, the Iditarod has been a direct factor in 150 deaths, although this number is being rumoured to be much more. There have been many injuries and deaths from factors such as being struck by a snowmobile, buried in snow, heart attacks, excessive fluid in the lungs, and acute aspiration pneumonia. This horrid list of cruelty just goes on. Injuries not only have an immediate negative effect on the dog's health, they often are long-term injuries and can continue to affect a dog's life after they retire. Dogs are considered to be man's best friend, yet we are bystanding to the torture of these animals. These claims are not without evidence, as the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine reported that as many as 80% of the dogs who finished the Iditarod sustained permanent lung damage. A separate study in the Journal of Veterinary Internal Medicine showed a 61% increase in the incidences of stomach erosions or ulcers in dogs as a direct result of endurance racing. The 40 hours of required rest is clearly not enough for the 18 to 15 days of racing. As 80% of the race is not televised, mushers are not accountable for what they do for the entirety of the race. This could lead to the mistreatment of dogs throughout the race without the necessary consequences. The Iditarod race is not of enjoyment or competition. It is of blatant animal cruelty and abuse. Secondly, the conditions the dogs are raced in are horrendous, with long periods of hard work in a difficult climate. The dogs run hundreds of miles per day through blizzards, treacherous ice, snowstorms and sub-zero temperatures. Keeping an, hour, an animal hour after hour in freezing conditions could warrant an animal cruelty conviction in most US states, and the Iditarod should be no excuse. The harm and death caused by the environment should not have a bly eye turned upon it. Action should be taken. The Iditarod Trail Committee, or the ITC, says all dog deaths are regrettable, but there are some that may be considered unpreventable. Although the ITC may consider some dog deaths unpreventable, a sure way to prevent deaths is to stop the Iditarod. The conditions are not fit for the race's cameras to even operate. 
for long periods of time, yet the animals are forced to make their way through freezing ice and snow for hundreds of miles. Do we value equipment over the lives of animals? Our Detroit is a race of cruelty, and no animal should be forced to endure these disgraceful conditions for an expended period of time under such hard work. In conclusion, the inhumane and atrocious conditions and treatment that dogs are forced into is appalling. These living creatures with the ability to feel both love and pain, yet we are standing by as they mercilessly and unwillingly made into endure the excruciating pain of long distance racing. These are our companion, man's best friend, yet we treat them like slaves without concern for their well-being. This is no way to treat other fellow animals, and it is therefore ridiculous to suggest that the ideas rot should continue. We should stand for those without a voice and stand against violence and abuse. We should put an end to the mindless maltreatment of these dogs. Thank you. Call upon the first negative speaker, Alyssa Zell. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that the Iditarod trail sled dog race should be permanently cancelled. We agree with the definition given by the affirmative team, however, we would like to cover the term should. Should is used as a term to indicate a right state or a state of correctness. However, we the negative team believe that this statement is false. Today, as the first speaker, I will be talking to you about how the livelihood of these people will be torn down. I will also be discussing how cancelling the event is quite a drastic measure and that we can fix the problem by simply modifying the event. Our second speaker will be talking about the social and economic benefits of the event how this competition encourages gender equality and is non-discriminative, and how a lot of resources would be wasted if this event were to be cancelled. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team case. The first speaker of the affirmative team has tried to tell you about animal deaths and that they are forced to run. However, these dogs are bred specifically for running. It's in their genes and in their DNA. And according to the Emory School of Medicine, it is possible for this information to be inherited biologically, e.g., ex for example, the love of running. They are bred to do this just as shepherd dogs are meant to herd, Labrador Labradors are meant to retrieve, greyhounds are meant to race, and huskies are meant to mush. He's also talked about the animal deaths. And while cancelling one tiny event can solve a tiny bit of the issue, it's also avoiding the issue. In horse racing, for example, from July 2016 to July 2017, 137 horses died in Australia alone from horse racing, and yet we're not cancelling horse racing completely. In comparison, the Iditarod casualty count is minute. If we do want to fix the issue, we shouldn't completely avoid it by just cutting off a tiny bit we should modify the event so that we can still enjoy the benefits behind it. The affirmative team also stated that the race has horrible health effects on the dogs. 
However, these dogs have been bred for a certain purpose and while it may be bad, it can also, it's also part of what they do. A lot of dogs anyway develop these diseases whether or these issues, whether they are running in these harsh environments or if they're wild or if they're kept. And it would, he talked about how they are forced to run through these harsh environments and they can't survive in these environments. But that's absolutely ridiculous. These animals are trained and bred and this is their natural environment. And a, hus a Siberian Husky's fur, for example, is negative, can withstand a cold of negative 37 degrees. He's also talked about how dogs are not being treated well. This may be true, but in a very small case. Most mushers create a deep bond and truly do love their dogs. There are only a few that are mistreated or injured. Dogs are given priority over mushers on checkpoints. Mushers are known to drop out of a race if their dog is hurt or injured. I will now be discussing my two points. My first point is that the livelihood of those involved in the event would be destroyed, as well as the cultural and history behind the event. The event first began in 1973 as a way to test the best dog sled mushers and as a way to honour the 100th anniversary of Alaska's induction into the United States. The trail leads from Seward to Nome following the trail that became a life-saving highway in 1925 for those suffering from diphtheria and Nome. The main motivation behind organising the race was that it was a way to save the sled dog culture and to preserve the historic Iditarod Trail. This race holds significant value to the Alaskan citizens as it's a reminder of their history and their culture. Many people put in effort, time and resources in participating in the event, organising and helping out. Each musher truly does care for their dogs and these dogs are bred to run and they love to do it. This is their livelihood, their culture and their history and yet you think it's right to just cut them off from that? To my second point, the issues within the competition can be fixed. By simply taking the time and effort to modify and fix the event, not only are you able to save the historic meaning and culture behind the event, you're also able to keep the benefits, the economic and social benefits that our second speaker will talk about. One of the main issues surrounding the controversy of the competition is the cruel treatment of the sled dogs. However, new rules are being put into place to guarantee each event is safer and better for humans and canines alike. This race, the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race, holds so many benefits for the Alaskan community and with modification, you can easily save the dog's life as well as enjoy it. So Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we the negative team undeniably believe that Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race should not be permanently cancelled. upon the second affirmative speaker, Vasil Samajia. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that the ideal Lord Chair sled dog race should be permanently cancelled. We, the affirmative team, completely agree with this statement. Our first speaker introduced our case by defining the topic and talking about the sled dog's well-being and safety during the race. He discussed the many unnecessary risks they face and how the Alaskan tundra is not suitable for a competition like this. Today is our second speaker. I'll be discussing the Iditarod con how the Iditarod contributes and funds the wider sledding dog industry, which is renowned for dog cruelty. I'll strengthen our case by also talking about how the Iditarod is losing money and its supporters and sponsors leading into disorganization and failure in the future. But firstly, I would like to point out some flaws in the opposition's argument. 
The first negative speaker has tried to tell you that the race can be modified and can be better. However, remember that this race has been going for over 40 years, and even with the new changes, the deaths and accidents happen even more frequently. The, uh, the speaker also said that the dogs are made for running uh, and the conditions in Alaska. Although the dogs are accustomed to cold and exercise, the Iditarod Road is intentionally designed to be a hardship that pushes mushers and dogs to the extreme, hence the high prize money. What started as a necessity to travel dog, uh, goods and medicine from A to B should, uh, shouldn't now be used for sport. Lance McKay, 2015 Iditarod Road winner, lost two, two dogs to probable heart attacks during the race. It's ridiculous to suggest that they're, uh, they're made for this um, much running in these conditions. Humans can run. Some people run um, Ironman marathons. That, does, uh, that, uh, that doesn't mean that they want to run marathons where 50% of the participants don't finish as a result of an injury. And most will sustain permanent damage to their lungs and digestive system. The negative speaker also said that many mushers treat their dogs well. As I will prove in my, in, in my arguments, this may, although this may be true for some, there is a problem with the culture of the sled dog industry. There are numerous documented cases of abuse, and in extreme circumstances, dogs have started to eat rocks out of frustration of being chained up uh, be, between tr training. Even if the mushers do, de uh, do treat their dogs well, the race is still, uh, itself is too perilous. The race itself is incredibly harmful for the dogs. There is no way that running the race in those conditions in that amount of time with that much sleep could ever be healthy. And how can we truly know that dogs are treated well when only the beginning and the end of the race is televised and mushers are not accountable for the entirety of the race? Now on to my arguments. The first one being that the Iditarod contributes and funds the cruel dog sledding industry. The Iditarod being one of the biggest and well-known sled races in the world attracts many tourists and generates a lot of money each year. But don't you think that it is sad to see all of this money fuel such a cruel industry? In addition to the unnecessarily harsh competition the dog and the mushers take part in, the treatment the animals get is atrocious and inhumane. Many people that visit the kennels they live in describe them as literal concentration camps where dogs live in such terrible conditions chained up outside and sleeping even in their own feces. They often get beaten up and left without food if they do not perform well with, while training. Also, the so-called retirement process of dogs that are not fast or good enough is devastating as each year hundreds of animals are, that aren't fast or fit enough for the competition or if no longer useful to the industry are shot, drowned or abandoned to starve. The big issue here, ladies and gentlemen, is that it keeps happening and the local government does close to nothing about it. And the, the way of treatment is even considered acceptable in Alaska, while in other states the mushers would have been charged in animal cruelty. Uh, the pro this prolonged abuse of the dogs can be uh, can stop by cancelling the race. But perhaps this is already happening. My second point is about the sponsors and supporters of the Idea to Road. Every event needs supporters in order for it to exist. That is how, for example, this race became so big after it started as a local thing for peop that people did for fun. However, the past couple of years have been tough for it, as many valuable sponsors have cancelled their, their deals with the race and after the American documentary called Sled Dogs came out last year and accused the race of cruelty towards its competitors. Among the lost um, sponsors was Jack Daniels, which has been their most valuable financial support for more than a decade. The, the race later announces a, a substantial budget cut in September, and the following month, the sport's biggest star became involved in the Idea Road's first stopping scandal. With that in mind, we can all agree that it is highly likely that the race would soon crumble under the pressure, making its cancellation in inevitable. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, sled dogs were once needed to help human, humans alive, but now we have turned them into our own version of the Hunger Games, where killing is a sport. But remember that at the end of the famous novel and movie, the Hunger Games once came to an end. The idea of should too. Thank you very much.
I call upon the second negative speaker, George Zang. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race should be permanently cancelled. We, the negative team, undoubtedly believe that this statement is completely false. Before I go into my own arguments, I would like to first point out some flaws in the opposition's arguments. The first affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that the trail sledding company are, reno are renowned for their cruelty. However, cruelty, and that these dogs are getting mistreated. However, this is completely wrong, because according to the official Iditarod entry website, there are many, many dog welfare regulations which are incredibly strict, all to protect these animals. And while there are still a tiny amount of people who don't follow this, the rules will continue to become stricter to eliminate, to eliminate those risks. He has also tried to tell you that the Iditarod is losing support from sponsors, which will lead to failure in the future. However, this is also incorrect because the Iditarod actually brings in a huge amount of money from tourism, which benefits the economy directly. I will address this in more detail in my first point. Our first speaker has already stated that the livelihood of these people would be torn down if the race was to be cancelled, and that cancelling the event would be taking an extreme and uncalled for measure when it, would be simply, when it would be simpler to modify the race instead. Today, I will be talking to you about three points. That the event benefits the social and, and economic part of the state immensely. How this event encourages gender equality and non-discrimination, which, which are extremely important 21st century values and that we would be wasting a massive amount of resources if we were to cancel this perfectly good event. So my first point for today is how this, is met, this event is of immense benefit to many aspects of the state, which I have pointed out in my rebuttal. This is because I, the Iditarod dog race is one of the most famous, if not the most famous, dog sled races in the world, and it brings a massive amount of tourists to the US state of Alaska, of which it is held in. In fact, on average, direct visitor, and direct visitor industry spending is $2.42 billion annually, according to Anchorage.net. This contributes directly to Alaska's economy and will continue doing so if the race was not to be cancelled. <clears throat> Entertainment is also another aspect that benefits, that benefits from the Iditarod dog race, and no one has the right to take that away from the Alaskans. As our first speaker has already explained, the dog race is deeply ingrained within their culture, and taking that from them is just cruel. Most of the population in Alaska would be looking forward to this race for the whole year, and it is many people's, most, and it is many people's favorite form of entertainment, not only to the spectators, but, also, but it is also something that the mushers love to do because of their deep bond with their dogs. I quote from turningheadskennel.com, an elite team of canine athletes and two mushers. We participate in the Iditarod dog race because we love traveling the trail with our dogs. Nothing is more remarkable than going on a, a thousand mile journey with our best friends. This shows just how much people love the race and for them it is one of the most purest forms of entertainment. Now to my second point, that the Iditarod dog race promotes and encourages gender equality and non-discrimination, which are both essential 21st century values that are extremely important in our lives. There are no different categories for this event, only the one, and you can do it as soon as you turn 18, but of course with prior experience. In fact, the only restriction in the Iditarod dog race competitor-wise is that you must be 18 and have prior experience, such as completing a prior Iditarod race. People come from all over the world to enter or compete in this event, and there are no restrictions concerning your citizenship and ethnicity which encourages non-discrimination, something everyone needs to be aware of and act upon. Now to my final point, we will, that we will be wasting massive amounts of resources if we were to cancel this perfectly harmful event, perfectly unharmful event. Alaska already has $589.3 million debt of its retiree health care alone, according to statedatalab.org. And cancelling this event will only take up even more money and resources that Alaska cannot afford. Alaska's 
Alaska's unemployment rate has, is already a whopping 7.3%, the highest in the US. And this number will only increase if the Iditarod trail sled race was to be cancelled, which will force many into poverty and in debt. In conclusion, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we, the negative team, undoubtedly believe that the Iditarod trail sled dog race should not be permanently cancelled. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that the Iditarod Trail sled dog race should be permanently cancelled. We, the affirmative team, believe that this statement is true. <coughs> the first negative speaker has tried to tell you that in Australia, uh, such as, that horse racing is more dangerous than the Iditarod and should be taken priority over. However, in 2017, approximately 0.5% of all dogs racing in the Iditarod died. Meanwhile, according to Adelaide Now, across Australia, only 0.07% of horses died racing. According to this, or, uh, added to this, horse races are 100% televised and only run for a couple of ma matter of minutes in comparison to the Iditarod which runs for two weeks and is only televised at the beginning and the end, leaving many hours in between when the mushers are not accountable <coughs> for the treatment of their dogs. The first negative speaker has also tried to tell you that many mushers treat their dogs well. Well, yes, if you consider the act of administering painkillers so that the dogs can endure the extreme pain that is inflicted upon them as treating them well. Only the first 20 teams to win the race are tested, and there have been many recorded cases of doping. An opiate point pain reliever called tramadol is used by many mushers so that the dogs can run through the pain. There is evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that the dogs endure large amounts of excruciating pain during the race. Not to mention the long-term effects of tramadol, which causes liver failure and seizures. Does this sound like many mushers treating their dogs well? The second negative speaker has tried to tell you that the race should not be cancelled and instead should be changed and reintroduced. However, this is wrong as we define it as cancelled in all forms. We define the topic as the race in its current state should be cancelled, not in a changed state. To argue that the race should be changed disagrees with our definition, however the negative team gave no indication of this. The second negative speaker has tried to tell you that many mushers treat their dogs well, and it's well regulated. However, we have found yet another testimonial from Ashley Keith, former Iditarod Mahandler. She visited Iditarod champion Dallas Seaver. The dogs were chained with only a plastic barrel for shelter, Many were injured and one was missing a limb. All were clearly desperate for affection. Dogs used for the Iditarod live in barren conditions like this and are also reportedly subjected to horrific beatings. She said, I've been in mushing for 20 years. I've worked for a couple of Iditarod mushers. Obviously the most notable was former Iditarod champion, Mitch Seavey. I went up there with the dream of running this race 15 years ago and the conditions that I found were just absolutely deplorable. Dogs changed to dilapidated houses with exposed screws. They were chewed. The ones that were plastic were chewed. There were holes in them. There was no bedding 
in any of the houses in November in Alaska. Some of them were sick. They hadn't received veterinary care. He took one into the woods and returned without it. I can only assume he killed it while I was there. I think that someone needs to stand up for the dogs. In 2018, there's no room for animal abuse and neglect like this. Does this sound well regulated to you? The second negative speaker has tried to tell you that the Iditarod brings tourists into Alaska and puts it on the map. However, Alaska shouldn't have to rely on the abuse of animals to fund a nation's tourism industry. To say the Iditarod is the only thing that draws tourists to Alaska totally neglects the majestic, the majesty of Alaska's wild coastal plains, towering snow-capped mountains, glacier-ringed fords, and natural beauty. The national parks, cruises, and fishing opportunities bring hordes of tourists into the country each year. Additionally, it's ludicrous to, select, su to suggest that the loss of one race could lead to the downfall or significant damage to Alaska's economy. Changes happen in cities and countries all over the world, and they spur. For example, when South Australia had been the host of the Grand Prix since 1985, the race became the jewel in the state's tourism crown. So when the announcement was made in December 1993 that the Adelaide's Grand Prix would be moved to East Melbourne, it sent shockwaves to the community. However, former South Australian Premier Dean Brown said that there was a huge, very negative reaction from the people. However, as we can clearly see, losing the Grand Prix was not the end of Adelaide. Indeed, now we successfully host huge international events such as the Clips of 500 and Adelaide Fringe. Nothing is forever, and you've got to earn what you attract, and you've got to earn what you keep. Our first speaker spoke to you about the long-term physical trauma of the race on the dogs during the Iditarod. He also spoke about the horrendous conditions encountered by the dogs during the course of the race. Our second speaker spoke to you about how the Iditarod contributes to and funds the wider dog sledding industry. He also drew attention to what can happen to the dogs after retirement. Finally, he made the point that the Iditarod is losing money and their supporters and sponsors. So Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we the affirmative team still strongly believe that the Iditarod trail sled dog race should be permanently cancelled. And we would like to remind you that this is not a new argument. The debate of animal rights versus monetary bonuses is one that has gone on for centuries and will most likely continue to be a point of uh, contention in the years to come. However, I would like to remind you of a quote from Gandhi. The greatness of a nation... from the third negative speaker, Biddy Thoreau. Good afternoon, Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that the Iditarod trail sled dog race should be permanently cancelled. We believe that this statement is definitely false. I'm the final speaker from the negative team, Vidi Vera, and I would like to begin by rebuttaling the opposition's points. The opposition has stated that many accidents occur during the Iditarod dog races. While this may be true, all sports have a certain risk, risk level. Car racing, horse racing, everything. Banning a sport just because of some accidents is not a valid reason. If that's the case, then all sports should be banned. People have passions, and some of these people's passions are these dog races. 
The affirmative team also stated that even with these new changes that have been implied, these dogs keep dying. Well, according to Anchorage Daily News, as one of my speakers has already pointed out, they have brought up new rules that may be put into place when, uh, when a dog dies. The Marsha and the team are disqualified and fewer dogs are put into each team, adding in more rest and checkpoints. The affirmative team has also stated that there is no way to guarantee these dogs' safety. This is absolutely incorrect because at each checkpoint, dogs are checked over by qualified veterinarians and are randomly drug tested. The affirmative team has also stated that the Iditarod dog racing are hunting games, such as the Hunger Games. Well, I, we believe that the real Hunger Games of the animal killing world, if you will, is actually animal hunting because people are physically going out and trying to kill these animals. These dog races are not for a purpose for killing each other as the Hunger Games are. They are for the purpose of racing these dogs as people race horses. They, they don't go into the field thinking, I'm going to kill some dogs today. The affirmative team also stated that these dogs eat rocks because of frustration. Well, this is incorrect because they did not say where they received this information from and they have no proof of this. They stated that the Iditarod dog races don't d generate a lot of money. Well, this may be true in some cases. It's easy to modify and improve these races to gain more money. Money is not everything. The history and culture of these races to the people of Alaska is very, very important. They stated that, they also stated that cancelling this event is the only way. Well, as we have said throughout this debate, we can modify the rules. Also, there is no guarantee that cancelling the event will stop the abuse. If cancelling or banning everything was the answer for everything, then we will have nothing. They stated that these dogs can be given performing enhancing drug, performing performance enhancing drugs. Well, rules can be made, precautions can be made for all of these cases, such as checking these dogs before the races and making sure that nobody has drugs on them. Many sports already do this, such as tennis, when they check every single athlete. Not just tennis, but when you go into the Olympics, you are tested for drugs. These dogs can be tested for drugs, and if there are drugs, they, the, the, musha, the musha can be disqualified. They also said that, do, oh sorry, according to the global news, the, the so-called drugs are actually painkillers, and it's only happened once. They've also stated that 0.5% of these dogs died, but less percent of horses have died in Australia. Well, there are only some televised horse races we'd like to point out, and there could be more horses than dogs that are being raced, and therefore if one dog dies, there's a higher percent than if one horse dies. They talked about a lady who who gone to see some dogs that were mistreated and living in very harsh conditions. Well, we'd like to say people are bad and things do happen. And as people have already said, not everything can be prevented because that is how mankind is. There can be these people can be disqualified and precautions can be taken against them. But not everybody is a good person. Sorry. Well, I'd like to sum up my team's case now, but I seem to have lost the point. So my first speaker has talked about how the Iditarod. Sorry about that. Um, my first speaker talked about how the sport can be modified to, and how the livelihood of many people depend on it, and how banning it completely will tear down everything that they've worked towards. How the sport can be modified to save and um, the, to save the historic significance, the culture and the hard work that's been put into making it. My second speaker, Georgia, has talked about how the, race, the racing helps with the social and economic parts of the state of Alaska. And if we were to cancel these races, a lot of resources would be wasted. And finally, that these races are futuristic as they promote gender equality and non-discrimination and they promote unity. Thank you.